And we up and going. Just want to start off by saying, Ko Holo Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakahakadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say to water to all the Akiyam and Akwa, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. My name is Yahshanan Nawa. And just come out on the highways and byways and let you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know that you are the true. Hebrew Israelites, the true name of the Father is Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one and the true name of his son is Yahweh Shai, which means that he's the savior or deliverer in the Paleo Hebrew. And you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you come from one of those tribes. Our forefather's name is Jacob. His name was changed to Israel or um, Yahshua in the Hebrew tongue. And he had 12 sons you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you come from one of those 12 sons. You are not blacks, you're not African Americans, you're not Negroes, you're not Hispanics, you're not Dominicans, you're not Latinos. You're none of those names that the so-called white man gave you when they enslaved you. You are biblical people, you are Hebrew Israelites. You're respected tribe. So, let's start off with um, Deuteronomy chapter seven and six. It just show, you know, this is you know, kind of going back into the basics. Used to hear this scripture all the time, but you know, I rarely hear it now. But this is Deuteronomy 7 and 6, and this is speaking on you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and how special you are to the Lord. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we're a special people to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. A very, very special people. We're his inheritance. We're his portion. And the scripture talks about when he divided the nations. Let me get that real quick. Yeah, I'm in a different location right now. You got a... Uh... These guys got their businesses around here. I see an older Jake right down, right... <laughs> You know, a couple of buildings over or whatever. He's looking at me like, what is he doing? You know, so maybe he'll come down and ask a question or two. You know. Yeah, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See? So the Lord chose the children of Israel out of all nations. And when you go off into... um. Going to the Apocrypha real quick. Oh, Salaki. Uh, Second Edris, chapter 6 and 54. Let's start there. It says, And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So everybody comes from Adam, but you can clearly see that there's a distinction there where the Lord chose a people. You know, out of all those nations, right? Verse six, um, fifty-five. All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh, because thou made the world for our sake. So the world was actually made for the sake of the children of Israel. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But why don't we have a part in this? Why are all these nations on top? Why are all these other nations making all the decisions on the planet, and we don't get a say in it? You have to wonder about that. You know what I'm saying? And that's going off into the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, 50, um, verse 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. See? So the Lord looking at them like, man, they ain't nothing. Spit, man. You losing a little bit of water, like my little water bottle here. You know what I'm saying? If I was to drop a couple of little droplets out of this, you know, that would mean nothing. I'm not, what could I do? I'm not going to try and siphon it back up. You know what I'm saying? So, the Lord created all nations, but he chose a nation out of all the nations that he created as his portion. And that's going off into you Israelites, you sons of God, man. 
verse 57, it says, And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us, to devour us. And that's what's going on. That's the reason why you'll see, like, say, for instance, all this immigration stuff that's going on. And you'll see these people at these borders. The people generally at the borders are dark-skinned people. More than likely, you know, a lot of the times they're Israelites. A lot, you know, sometimes it's Hamites and other, other nations of people. But I'm talking about in general, the so-called white man, he's the one that's telling these people they can't come in. If you notice that on TV with all the immigration shit, it's always the Europe, so-called European telling people that they can't go past this point. Why? Because they're the ones that's in rulership. They're the ones that's running the earth. And especially amongst you so-called blacks, they, 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 Hispanics and Native Americans, they lord over us. Why do you see them in the neighborhood? Every neighborhood, every so-called black neighborhood or Hispanic or Native American neighborhood, I would say most definitely amongst the so-called blacks on the, the tribe of Judah, what you'll see is other nations in your neighborhood, even though it's 99% you, but these other people are in your neighborhood. That's where it goes off into the parable of... Um, the dogs lick the wound when you go up into that um, parable of Lazarus and the rich man. See these other nations, Esau, he gets his, he gets the biggest cut. He's in the neighborhood. Of course, you know, he owns the McDonald's, the Wendy's, you know, a, lot, a bunch of the larger corporations, you know, your Walmarts, you know, things of that nature like that. So they got the biggest bulk of it. But when it comes straight down to your, like your liquor stores, beauty supply stores, um, just supermarkets in general, banks. You see what I'm saying? It don't make no difference. Your mechanic shops, whatever you need, whatever you have to get, your gas. You know, those other nations are in our neighborhoods, and they're just licking the wound, man. They, 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 they sopping up what's left. Esau taking it all, you know, the majority, but they're sopping up what's left and leaving us with crumbs, right? Verse 58, Second Ezra 6 and 58, both. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. So the Lord gave us into the hands of the enemy, man, because why? We didn't listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, the curses, man. Verse 59, if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So this is what Edris was asking the Lord. How long is this going to endure? How long is this going to go on? How long are these people going to be over, over us? And we can clearly see that it's not going to be that much longer. You can clearly see the, the, the fall of, of America. I was just watching a video um, from the elder in um, Chicago. And he had a short clip of um, Joe Biden over, you know, he's over there in um, um, France right now with the, um, the 80th of um, uh, uh, Doomsday or D-Day um, um, celebration or whatever the fuck that shit is, you know. Esau celebrating his wars and, you know, them basically conquering and all that other shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they were showing the video and he's walking up. And you can, man, I'm talking about this guy walking, man, like that guy need to be in hospice, man. But he kept trying to sit down, you know, and there wasn't no seats around. It was just everybody was, it was a standing event. He was supposed to be standing there. Ain't no fucking chairs. And this guy, he's trying to sit down and you can see Jill, which he's supposedly be a doctor. You can see her covering her mouth truck telling him to stand up, stand up. He kept trying to, and then they eventually, you know, he kind of just, you know, I guess they kind of figured, okay, he's embarrassing us. Let's get him the fuck out of here before he really, he does something stupid. But the man is frail. And, and, and that's, a, that's a, 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 a sign of the fall and the weaknesses of America. America is falling, man. This place is through. All the businesses are going out of business. You know, I was just coming to camp, you know, and just driving, and I'm just looking at shit. And, 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 and all these buildings are vacant, man. You got people trying to start businesses. Hey, right now is not the time to start no business. <laughs> to be honest with you, you know, unless you, you're starting something that, you know, got to do with, I mean, shit, Walmart and fucking um, Amazon and pretty much done took over everything, man. You know, it, it's only a few things that you can actually you know, open up and, and, and possibly, you know, prosper. But with the rise in the, in the prices of things, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's not even worth it right off, you know? A lot of people can't buy houses. They're um, all the, um, the, 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 the elite or the um, richer people, they're buying up all the real estate 
and, 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 and people, and there's no even no houses to really buy because they buy them all and then they rent them to the people and you can barely go anywhere and get a damn a spot for like under $2,000 right now. That's crazy, bro. We're not gonna even talk about New York. You go out there in New York, man, a damn studio apartment, man, probably hit you over the head for about 3,500, 4,000 a month. And I was just, I just done a lesson the other day, I think it was yesterday or so, where it's talking about how, um, pretty much, you know what I'm saying, like 40 million people are basically, you know, on a slab to get um, thrown out of their house, man, for, uh, uh, you know, for back rent. <laughs> people are behind on rent. People are getting evicted. This one lady, she's a constable. Um, you know, she, you know, she go door to door and see some places they'll give you a minute to get out of the home. But some places you got to go the day of. And she was like, she had done 25 evictions by 12 o'clock in the afternoon. She went on her lunch break and came back to do some more. And, and, and all those um, hookups was in one apartment complex. Complex. So these people, they getting rid of people, man. You see what I'm saying? So America's falling, man. So it's high time to awake out of sleep. Let me get that real quick. Normally, you know, used to end up the camp with that, but you know what I'm saying? By the spirit, we bring it out. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Where now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. See, our salvation is nearer than we believe. Now it is. You can see the times. Everything is playing out. See? It's a lock you for the noise in the background, too. They're doing construction across the street. But uh, verse 12, it says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. See? It's time to put off the bullshit. It's, it's the high time to awake out of sleep, to repent to the Father Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh Shai, and come out of the bullshit. And this is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, because America's about to be nuked. It's all manners of wars, rumors of war talk right now. Um, Russia is moving um, 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 shit, nuclear, <laughs> you know, nuclear uh, uh, hookups towards Cuba. Cuba is right here off the, off the coast of America. And basically what they're doing is they're doing that because America is involved. You know, you got the West and NATO. And, and, and basically all these countries are getting involved with giving Ukraine these weapons. And now they're shooting American weapons into Russia. So that in turn, this man over in Russia, the president of Russia, Putin, he like, well, all right, I'm going to pull up on y'all. So supposedly these these particular, um, they, they don't, they, you know, not supposedly, they're not armed with nuclear weapons, but they can be. And they're going to pull up on a on Cuban coast. How far you think Cuba is from here, man? Cuba is nowhere from America um, off the bottom of the map, man. It's nothing. Let me see where we at. I'm locked here. I like to always check the camera a little bit. You know, um, we've had some technical difficulties. Camera go down on you and you'll just be out here standing up talking for a while and you <laughs> and be like, damn, it wasn't even recording. But yeah, man, um... The wars, rumors of wars, things are getting hot. But these things right here are also happening as well. Let's get 2 Timothy. And um, in, um, 2 Timothy 3, from the top, and it's entitled Godlessness in the Last Days. Start from um, verse 1, 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. All those things are happening. All those things are happening. It's a clear indicator of what will be going on in the end days. This right here is happening on a full scale. So we have to know that the Lord is soon to come. Because the last um, prophecy... The last two major prophecies is what? The MOTB, that squid game they want to put in you, you know what I'm saying, that market of beauty and the beast. And that's already in play. That's why you see all these kiosks, self-checkout um, uh, um, lanes, and all these different stores. People not even, you can rarely go anywhere, man, and deal with a cashier now. See? So you got that, and then you got the um, um, World War III. Th those are the last two major prophecies to happen. 
What did Yahushua say? He said wars, rumors of wars would be one of the things that would be happening before his coming. And I'm going to get that too. Yahweh Ratzah. 2 Timothy 3 and 3. It says, it goes on to say, without natural affection, people don't have no natural affection right now, man. They killing their babies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all, all manner of, 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 you know, domestic violence. I'm talking about, man, people are really taking people out now. People getting deleted, getting deleted on a grand scale. Yeah, man, people getting taken out in, in very vicious ways. The judgment of Yahweh by Shimei is going forth in the earth, man. Because he said that he will visit the earth in which he made. Right? It says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, and continent. Look, it says, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that that are good you got people out here they they hate the shit out of you for doing good here you go the brothers will go out on the highways and byways and risk their lives to let you know that uh uh uh, uh the enemy your enemy is about to be destroyed and that you are the greatest people on earth and, and, and they'll look at you man jake be ready to fight you man especially the so-called black woman you know but hey we have to come out here man we put our bodies on the on the line man you don't know who you're gonna run into um, out here, man. We just we just do what we gotta do. We pray to Yahweh about Shimei outside for protection, and we do the work, man. None of us know our lot. We do know that in the, in the ancient days, our apostles and um elders, you know what I'm saying? Hey, they they, they got hemmed up, thrown in the jail cells, man. Stoned. You know, the Israelite people are, are people that stubborn. They're hard headed as hell, like the scripture says. And they, and they are the ones that always kill the prophets. Who you think killed Yahweh Shai, man? Who you think had it set up for the Lord to be, you know, um, 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 you know, tortured and everything, like how he, all the things that he went through? I mean, even though it was prophetic, we know he had to go through it and do it. But it was our people. It was our people that stoned the prophets. It was our people that ran down on the prophets, man. They didn't want to hear what was good. They didn't want to hear the, the, the truth. They wanted to hear good things, smooth things. You know, because the prophets, when the prophets normally come along, they're, hey, they're, they're prophesying gloom and doom. And this is what we're doing. This is the type of work that we're doing. We're going on the highways and byways, and we're letting our people know, hey, look, man, you got to repent. Stop with the bullshit. Stop. That shit is wrong. Stop doing that. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Jake don't want to do right. Jake don't like reproof. They don't like discipline. You know, if it's not about entertainment and they can't laugh, he, 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 you know, if it's not a, a feel good thing to him, because Jake is real fleshly. Jake real carnal, man. But it goes on to say, verse four, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of, of pleasures more than lovers of God. That's what I just said. basically. Jake loved pleasure, man. You can tell Jake and, and, and Jake will actually know. They're like, yeah, I know pork not good for you, but I just can't stop. I got to have my my bacon. I got to have my pork chop. My dad is like that. He'll say stuff like that. I got to. Well, you don't have to have no goddamn pig, man. There's other, you know, other animals you can eat. You don't have to. I have to have it. You know, that's his attitude on it, you know. And I just let him go ahead and go for it, man. What can you do? What can you do? Oh, I grew up off of it. I, I hear that from my uncles. I grew up off pork. I'm still alive. All right, but you... Look at look at your your health though, your 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 health conditions is horrible. So you just gonna eat pork until you 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 out of here, you know? I just done that lesson on um, red lobster, the racial aspect of red lobster, and I didn't even know that red lobster, you know, was really dealing with um, so-called black people. The, the the majority of the customers that kept red lobster alive for all these decades was Negroes, man, going through eating all manner of abominable foods. They kept them in business, man. Eating things that the Lord told us not to eat. You're not supposed to eat anything out of the seas or the waters if it doesn't have fins and scales. If it don't have fins and scales, you're supposed to leave that shit alone, man. But again, Jake loved catfish. Catfish don't have no, um, no scales on it. But Jake will fuck some catfish up, man. Jake loved things like jambalaya, um, gumbo, Every met frog legs, you know, 
it tastes like chicken. You know what I'm saying? So Jake is into stuff like that. And once you get to telling them about that, hey, they, they turn, they turn the um, scriptures talk about how they turn, you know, they turn the shoulder. Oh man, get out of here. I don't want to hear that shit. You trying to tip, you, you telling them how to, you're actually showing them love by saying, bro, that's unhealthy. Bro, don't smoke cigarettes, bro. This guy, he's just rolling, he's just making circles. Playing his little music. Hey, you know, Jake, Jake like to chill though, man. Jake is a plain man though. Scripture talks about that. Jake just chilling, man. But he keeps circling this boy. Anyway, it goes on to say, um, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. So we're supposed to turn away from people like that, man. And I gotta say, man, being into this truth, it's a lonely road, man. It's a lonely road. You know, you might be the only person in your household that's into the truth. If you have a secondary person in the house, household with you that believe in the truth like how you do, man, that's a blessing. Because <laughs> cause most of the time, you know, um, that's what that scripture talks about. Let me see. Um, I think it's the one where um, Yahweh Shah talking about he came to set uh, uh, Salaki. Lock you. See the elder about to go uh, just put something up. Elder um, Yashawamba out in um, Texas. Yeah, man. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, for our, uh, our um, teachers, man, and elders and apostles, man. Yeah, Matthew chapter 10 and verse. Yeah, let me start at verse 34. And it's entitled, Not Peace, but a Sword. And this is red letter, so we know that I'm Yahweh Shai, which the world eagerly calls Jesus is talking. He says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But what? But, but these Christians will tell you the Lord, he loves everything. These Christians will have you believe that the Lord is coming down here to, to, to just, you know, pick your babies up, kiss them on the cheek, throw them in the air, have them all on his shoulders, walking, you know, with the little white sheet and shit. Man, that ain't got nothing to do with the scriptures, man. A lot of our people are going to be destroyed with that white Jesus mentality of he loves everything. But the Lord clearly said, let me get that back again. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. See? And that's why I was talking about with... um. You may be in you may be the only person in, in the household that believe in you. How about Shimia was shot? But again, you may have a, a brother or a sister or auntie, or maybe you know, but hey, you, you know, it could be you and your mom might be um, believe. But if you got a secondary person in the home that actually believes along with you, and that's a beautiful thing, man. That's rare. That's rare. I done told all my family about about, <laughs> about this truth, man, and not a one of them, boy. No, nah, I say not a one of them has awakened man and this done got to the point now where I just said stop with them you know what I'm saying they I done admonished them probably way more times than I should have you know you admonish them twice three times you know you try hey they don't get it man it's just not for them right it goes on to say a man um, um he that loveth father or more mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And, and that's a good point right there when it comes to uh, a lot of our people, they went out and they took that COV-19. They went and took them jump shots with them boost mobiles. They took them boosters. And there's going to be a lot of our people that's going to fall victim to the MOTB, the mark of the beauty and the beast, because they're going to be loving their children more than they love the Lord. See? See? This is why we keep continually giving warning about that MOTB, man. That mark of the beauty and the beast is coming, and you are not to take it. If you take it, you're going to be destroyed. There's no coming back from that, man. There's no coming back from taking that MOTB. The apostle um, Tamar, he went into that yesterday. Like, look, man, you through if you take that, man. But it's going to be a lot of our people, that's Israelites, that know that they're Israelites, that's going to take that shit, man. And we're praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he will, you know, um, hey, give us a spirit of, of endurance. Have mercy on us, man. 
because that's going to be a spirit on the people that's going to go and line up and let this man, um, 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 you know, implement a, 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 a device in them, man. That's going to be a spirit on them. And we're praying to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai that he would not take away his Holy Spirit from us. As a matter of fact, that's something that King David um, prayed. Let's get that in Psalms 50, 51. Let me start at verse 9, Psalms 51 and 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. This is something good to pray. This was a very beautiful prayer um, by King David, man. Create me a clean spirit. No, Salaki. Create in me a clean heart. Or basically a clean mindset, a clean way of thinking. Oh God, Yahweh. And renew a right spirit within me. You should be praying this, man. This is something I pray every day. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's something you should be praying for. That's very vital. Because if the Lord take away his spirit from you, you do, man. You should be extra, extra happy about coming into this truth if the Lord has awakened you. I really got to say, man. You know, we go through a lot of stuff. We go through ailments, you know. You might go through that loneliness because your family members looking at you like you're crazy now. He's in that coat or she's in that coat. Hey, look, hey, know that you ain't good company, man. Because your Howard Shai is with you. Your Howard Shai is coming through to suck with you. You don't need these niggas, man. Let them go do what they do. Let them go do what they do, man. Because see, it's summertime. It's done got warm again. Jake out here gonna go and do all manner of wickedness for these next three to four months until it gets cold. And that really don't slow Jake up. Jake still be out here doing all manner of wickedness, man. But these 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 summer months, Jake be out here going ape shit crazy, bro. And you have to be careful around Jake too, man. That's a lot. You got to be careful around Jake. You know? Use wisdom when you out and about and you around Jake. Because Jake, man, got spirits and demons on him, man. And they have that real true hatred towards their brethren. Um, um, that goes off into Deuteronomy chapter 28, which I said I would get. So let's go into a little bit of um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and those curses, man. Lock. Let me check the camera again. Okay, we still up and going. Yeah, again, like I said, I had to check that camera out. I did um, open up. Uh, I made some storage space on there because, hey, a lot of videos, man. I, and sometimes I forget. And I've been at camp before, recording, or thinking I'm recording, and it's not actually recording. <laughs> so I ended up on clearing up about 70 gigs, so I should be good for a little while. Um, Deuteronomy 28, let's just start from the top, and it's entitled, Blessings for Obedience. Deuteronomy 28 and 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord Yahweh thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth so at, at one point we was there during the reign of our King David during the reign of King Solomon we had that 40 years man but pretty much overall we've been in captivity ever since no other nation has been in, in, in as many captivities as the children of Israel man you know, you had the, the Assyrian, you had the Babylonian, you know, you had the um, Persian Medes, you had the, um, the Greek and Roman. <laughs> I mean, shit, we back in slavery right here in the Americas, but this is the last hoorah for these people, man. We're never going into slavery again after this shit, man. Right? So let's, get, let's jump to verse 15. Now, this is what the Lord said you would be blessed. We would be above all nations if we were obedient. Now, here are the curses. And it's entitled Curses for Disobedience in verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And that's what's done happened to us. That's the reason why you got your black on black crime. That's the reason why we're eating um, defiled ass food. 
That's the reason the scriptures clearly says that hey, we would have to go to this man for once of all things. Hunger, thirst. Um, um, what else is it? Uh, matter of fact, let me jump to it. We are the only people that's in this situation. That's how you know that we are the children of Israel. And verse 46 right here says, And they shall be upon thee, these, these curses shall be upon thee, for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Right? It goes on to say, verse 47, Because thou servest not the Lord, Yahweh thy God, with joyfulness, which that's what we should, man, you should be uh, uh, serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh man, with all joy. It's actually a, a commandment to be um, joyful, you know, before the Lord, man, in the book of Psalms. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. But see, Jake want to be like the other nations. We're supposed to be separate. That's what that word holy goes into. We're supposed to be separated from these other nations. That's the reason why the Lord gave us the laws, the statutes and commandments. It separated us from the other nations. It's what gave us our wisdom, this word, man. Verse 47, no, uh, verse, verse 48 is the point that I wanted to get to. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which Yahweh shall send against thee. So the Lord sent these on um, these our enemies against us. Why? Because we broke our end of the contract. Because we wanted to do what the other nations were doing. Jake want to eat got goddamn catfish. Jake want to eat possum squirrels and shit and I'm southern Jake man southern Jake got it bad man I grew up in the south and, and, and you know even just growing up I couldn't understand like how the fuck you eating that why would you you know Jake could eat roadkill goddamn niggas eating possum you know rabbits and you know just squirrels and you know just whatever man cutting that shit up putting it in a pot with some rice see the Lord gave us a dietary law, man. But it says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord thy God shall send against thee in hunger. So that's why we have to go to supermarkets. We don't own no cattle. We don't own any farms. We have no control over what, what our food um, 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 is, man. We got to go to a supermarket and trust in a people that, that are our enemies. Like seriously, if you you know you make you know if you go into Walmart or or a local um 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 food stand in, in, in your neighborhood, generally Jake don't own any of that shit. You don't know where your beef is coming from. Now they talking about damn bird flu in the damn cattle, bird flu and in, in, in milk in the supermarkets, shit like that, man. We're not in control of any of those things. You see. Hell, even Eve, Eve going to um, damn Walmart and fussing about them being out of um, goddamn baby formula. <laughs> Crazy, man. So hunger, if you want a McDonald's, you want a burger, you want to just go and get you a, a box of cornflakes from whatever, man. If it's, if it's got to do with food, you're going to your enemy to get that shit. So we know that these scriptures is true. It says, and in thirst, you got to pay this man a water bill. Here you go, man, of earth. Got all this goddamn water on it, and you got to pay this man a water bill. I can understand, you know, maintenance, you know what I'm saying, you know, keeping up with things, but, man, look, these people will turn your water off. That, that, matter of fact, right here in, in, in Michigan, where I'm at right now in Detroit, hey, they, hey, they, <laughs> they turned off a lot of people's water. They didn't give a fuck about you, you know, not having no water. They turn off your heat in the, in the winter. It's cold-ass winters here, man. But we have to depend on Esau for drinking water. You getting a bottle of water, you know. You shouldn't be drinking no damn soda or pop or whatever they call it. Mountain Dews, Pepsis, they own all that shit. Juice, coffee, milk, energy drinks. You want a shot of liquor, you want some beer. Esau is in control of that. So we have to go to him for all things when it comes to thirst. It goes on to say, and in nakedness, which is going up into your clothing. See? We have to go to this man for pants, drawers, socks, t-shirts, whatever. A hat, winter hat, mittens, gloves, coats, you name it. Now, our people may own a, a store or something like that that sells those things, but 
they're not in control of the materials, you know what I'm saying? The warehouse, the, the textile, so to speak. They're not in control. We're not in control of none of that stuff, right? It says, and in wants of all things. So everything that you want in this place, like I just drove here to camp. And for me to be able to drive here, I needed his gas. I needed his driver's license. I needed his insurance, my registration. You know what I'm saying? The tabs, the plates. And I had to, and I had to, you know, go by the rules of his stop signs. I had to stop at all the stop signs. I had to stop at all his lights. See, see, see how that breaks down. He's in control of all things. If you want to, you know, become a plumber, you got to go to him. You might know how to braid some hair or cut some hair, you know, but you got to go to him. His cosmetology schools for the licenses. If he catch you up. You know, he can come seize all your things, take you to jail, give you fines. You know? It don't make no difference what you like. I'm I'm, I'm looking at the, um, the, the gentleman right here to the next to me. I think I'm not sure what he, uh, it, it appears he have like a, I guess maybe he sells like lawn care um, or, um, you know, lawnmowers and things of that nature. You know, that's his business. He's a Jake. I can see, you know, he's a Jake. He got that business, but guess what? He's not in, 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 in control of the parts that um, that that put together a lawnmower, man, or a weed whacker, or edger. Esau is, is in control of all those things, man. <clears throat> and so even for this man to have a business, he had to get the licenses, he had to get the permits. If you want to build a house, you got to go to him for all the materials. You can't just build a, a, a house. You may know how to build one. But you're gonna to have to go and register that shit with the with the with the people. You see? So now it goes on to say, um, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And always, you know, when I come across that scripture, if you go into that scripture and, and you just, you know, kind of copy that, that yoke of iron and put it in Google, guess what's gonna come up? Negroes, man. Negroes. Let me see. Yeah, man, Esau done a real number on us, man. And our people are here. Jake, Jake about to celebrate 4th of July. Hardcore. Jake put more money into uh, 4th of July than any other nation. Yep, see, I, I just Googled it. Let me go to images. And when you put in that, and when, when you put that in, all you see is black people pop up. So-called black people. Let me see. Maybe you can see that. That glare. See? If you Google it, all you're going to see is so-called black people popping up in Google, man. No other nation is going through that. No other nation went through that. See? But see, the so-called Chinese people, they got, they got land. They got their own military. If you were to go to China, you would have to have a passport, and they're going to check you in. They're going to they're gonna check through your bags. They're going to want to see if you got whatever. They're a... You know, so we're not in control of anything like that. We don't have a land where people are flying in and we're checking their shit. See? We just scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, man. It's slaves, man. And, and matter of fact, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68, let's just get straight to it. It says, And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you, right? And when it goes off into no man shall buy you, that's just simply going off into no one will redeem you, because in the scriptures, you know, a person might, might um, an Israelite may fall on bad luck, so to speak, but one of his brothers can come through and redeem him. You know, he might, you know, you have to understand that when it's, because see, a lot of people get that mixed up when it says no man will buy you. It don't even make no sense. We clearly know that we were on auction blocks and that people bought us. So what does this actually mean? 
It just simply means it's going off into a redeemer. And when you look up the, on the law on redeeming in Israel, you'll see the full picture of it, right? But you got some of these Christians, they're like, see, but nobody, y'all, 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 y'all freely gave yourselves as slaves. That, that, that's a doctrine. That's a real sneaky, sneaky ass doctrine. No, you Israelites, no, you black people, you actually freely gave yourselves into slavery. Oh, but who the fuck does that? Come on, bro. Use some common sense, man. And that word Egypt is synonymous with bondage. When you go up into um, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2, check it out. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. What's bondage? Slavery. Because the, the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. But now the Lord is saying, I'm going to send you into a new Egypt. This time it's going to be on ships. Right? So when you do the history on, on Egypt, and, and hell, you can walk from Egypt to Israel. It don't take no ships to get there. But we know that America is, is spiritually called Egypt. That's the reason why you'll see the pyramid on the back of the dollar. You know? It's a lot of stuff that, uh, that, that, that America is into. A lot of the shit that, that America is into is really Egyptian shit. When you look into the history, it's a lot of similarities because America, they get a lot of their culture or these so-called white. Because see, a lot of that, um, you know, your Greeks, your Romans, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of those, the things that they was into, a lot of that stuff was Greek, I mean, um, um, Egyptian stuff. And this is no more than just modern day Egypt, man. They had the Israelites in slavery in the, in the original Egypt, and they had the, the, the Israelites in, in the spiritual Egypt. And it's, called, it's also called spiritual Sodom. Why do they call it spiritual Sodom? What month is this? Pride month. And then they'll give you Juneteenth in the middle of Pride month. And then they get a longer month than you actually get for your black history. You, you Negroes better wake up, man. These LGBTQ people... They're attaching themselves to you and your Black Lives Matter bullshit, and they get no. This place is spiritually called Sodom. They, 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 hey, it, it, all you seeing is, is is rainbow flags and shit flying, man. And that's an abomination. The Lord, when the Lord used the rainbow, he he made a covenant with the earth that he would not use water to you know to um you know to basically flood this bitch out, man. But what is um um um. Uh, uh, Esau do. He takes that that symbol and turns it into something abominable, man. And this is why this place is going to be destroyed, man. There's too much wickedness here. All the wisdom is gone. The best hope that America got is Trump and Biden. You know this place through. <laughs> you know this place through with them the only options you got. Because Joe Biden is he's finished. He's finished, man. Then you got the other, uh, 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 your boy Donald Trump. And, and you can clearly see between those two men the split that's in America. Because half the country still believe Trump their president. Then the other half, of course, you know, now you got the half that actually voted for Biden. Shit, they ready to vote for Trump now because he was that horrible. But the damage is done. Well, let's get Matthew 12. And 25. And Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts. And this is red letter, so we know Yahweh Shai is speaking, which the world evenly calls Jesus again. They start using those names, man. Get away from that Jesus shit. The Lord's name is not Jesus, man. The letter J was invented in 1524. There was no letter J when the Lord walked the earth. Well, nobody calling on no damn Jesus. They was calling him by his Hebrew name that, that Gabriel told them to call him. Yahweh Shai. Yah meaning he, Hawashai meaning savior or deliverer. And the true name again is, of the father is Yahweh, man. It's power in those names. That's the reason why Esau don't want um, um, us, uh, uh, us to say it. That's the reason why the world is, is, is in a, a tailspin right now. Because the real men of the Lord are calling on the names of the Lord and, and, and we're chanting this place down, man. We're putting curses on this place. And Yahawashai, Matthew 12 and 25 again, and Yahawashai knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. 
and, and that's what's going on with America. America is slowly circling the toilet, it's crumbling because the people are against the people. And you know the scriptures talked about how the Lord gonna put the Egyptian against the Egyptian. This place is about to go full-fledged civil war soon, man. And you Jake, man, Jake gonna get caught up in it because Jake feel like they're Americans. And really Jake don't know no better. It's just, it's really the curses, man. Those curses done a real number on us, man. I mean, because it says that those curses will overtake us. When you overtake something, it's like, you, it not only do it has you, but it, 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 it totally consumes you. Our people are totally consumed with the curses, man. See what I'm saying? Jake, hey, hey, Jake love America. <laughs> he just riding by with his scooter and shit with no hand. Playing his music, man. That's all, you know, Jake, like I said again, man, Jake like to chill. But all that mirth, that shit right there, man, is about to be cut out. This shit is about to go into a complete tailspin of chaos, man. Because it's all disorder here. When it's disorder, disorder comes chaos, man. America is already chaotic. Just, just imagine when they shut shit down, man. Just imagine when you can't call 911. Just imagine if you don't have no lights, man. Hey, Jake, hey, people comfortable as hell here. That's another problem with the American people, too. They're comfortable. They're fat, obese, they're lazy as hell. You know? I be in Walmart, man. There's people be in Walmart, man. Motherfuckers, three, four hundred pounds. Easy. The kids. Fat as hell, unhealthy, breathing hard, you know? So just imagine, th th these people have never, you know, never fasted. They don't know what a, what a day of no food is like. You wait till Jake ain't had no food in two days. Man, that shit, my boy. You wait till Jake, and, uh, <laughs> one of the elders is talking about it. Let Jake don't have a cigarette, man, for two days. And this motherfucker used to smoking a pack a day. What do you think it's going to be? <laughs> it's going to be all out chaos, man. The, 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 the so-called black woman don't have no patience in the household right now with the kids. Think about what she's going to do to the kids when they get to crying and talking about they're hungry. And she's hungry, too. There's no more weed to smoke. No more blunts to roll. The last shot of liquor gone. Because, you know, Jake. Jake gonna ramsack liquor stores. Motherfuckers gonna be grabbing the lottery tickets and shit. Ain't gonna be no damn lottery no more. But these are the things that Jake gonna be out here doing, man. And not only Jake, but all these nations of people gonna be out here doing doing some things. Y'all better, hey, I, I say it all the time. You newcomers, man, hey, watch that movie The Road. There's plenty of those movies that centered around, you know, um, cannibalism. <laughs> hey, because cannibalism is in the scriptures. The siege of 70 AD, our people were eating the children, man. The Israelites was eating the babies. It, that, that's been happening a few times in the scriptures. That hunger set in, man. People are going to be nutting the hell up out here. So that's why we're praying to Yahweh about Shema Shai, man, for mercy. For that endurance, man. You don't want no parts of what's to come to this place, man. Because when the Lord take the men, the men of the Lord off the street, when that, when that famine of the word comes, it's going to be a wrap. Lord gonna go. He's gonna neatly pack up the Israel. <laughs> he gonna neatly pack up his men and, and, and set them and, and just and y'all chill. Or out chaos gonna come from that man. Verse twenty six it says, and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And it's not just America. It's all these European countries. And then as a whole, these Edomites can't get along. You got the Russians fighting against Ukraine. You, know, you got the Russians against NATO. NATO, all of them are Edomites. You think that they will all come together and say, hey, we're dying all quicker than we're being born. Let's make it a way. Let's make a way for our children to have a future to bring our race back. Hell, we're dying off quicker than we're being born. They can't even come together on that. Then they made it to the point where it's unaffordable. It's unaffordable to have a goddamn um, family, man. You can't even, you, shit, motherfuckers barely got a place to live. This is Esau. This is the, that's why the scripture talks about, um, 
When the righteous are in authority, let me see if I can find that. Yeah, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people are, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. That's the reason why people are, are when you pay attention to people when you're out in the public, man. People sad, man. People are in mourning. People have that stressed look on their face. You don't see too many smiles no more. And if there's any smiles at all, you know, it's really just fakeness, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Jacob smile, Jacob smile all down when they, you know, they, they'll cheese their ass off when they, um, you know, approach a so-called white person. You know, when it comes to their own people, though, it's all grim looks, man. But people are, are struggling, man. People are, are not doing well right now, man. Women are taking a real hard hit. I actually seen um, the brother, he had a video, it was like a TikTok collage. Of just women complaining. They're like, man, how the fuck we gonna make it? We can we can barely make it here. Mass majority of women got these these um these uh uh, uh OnlyFans accounts and shit. That's oversaturated. You're telling somebody, oh, you can get my Instagram. Well, you already know what that means. As soon as a woman tells you you can get you can't get their phone number, you can get their Instagram. You better believe there's an OnlyFans that's coming with that, man. She's trying to get money. <laughs> hey, and dudes is not dealing with it. Like, I seen a video yesterday. And this guy was doing a reaction. It was this lady. She was in her car. As a matter of fact, she was a married woman, too. So I really didn't understand, you know, why she wanted the attention of another guy. But she was basically, which, I mean, I get what she was trying to say. But she was basically saying that she was at Whole Foods. She walking through the parking lot. She see a so-called black guy. And basically, the so-called black guy, he went out of his way to not even speak to her ass. She said she got into the, the Whole Foods, came across another so-called black guy. He went out of his way to not speak to her. And, he, and she was just wondering, like, what is going on? Why don't the so-called black men speak to so-called black women anymore? And basically, all the comment board was lit up with, like, man, niggas, it's tired of y'all. You know, we're tired of being, you know, disrespected, you know, we're tired of being looked at as weirdos. You can't even holler at a chick no more, man. You know, back in the days, man, you can walk up on a woman, man, and say, hey, how you doing? My name is such and such, such and such. You know, throw your little game, you know what I'm saying? Spit your little line or whatever. You know, you single. Oh, bet. You know what I'm saying? Let me, what you, let me get your number. You know, you used to be able to do shit like that. That's out the window, man. I remember before the cell phone came in, me and my brothers, man, and my friends, we used to go to the mall with a with a with a with a, a sheet, a notebook piece, a piece of notebook paper in our back pocket with a damn pencil, man, or a pen. And we used to have little contests and shit like that, man. Come up out of the mall, man, with like 20 numbers, man. <laughs> you know? It ain't like that no more, man. The men are not dealing with the women like that. So when it's straight, when when all hell breaks loose. They're not gonna have no men to protect them. Hey, a man, hey, you, a man is a, is a, is a, that's why the scriptures it actually talks about um a man. How's it go? I can't think I was worried, but basically, a man is a he, he's a shield from the wind basically yeah I can't think where it's at Salakia but roughly paraphrasing hey I mean it's common sense a man is, is a protector man but then you got this generation as well you know what I'm saying where these these are not you know I think the last generation of, of men were the men of the 70s so to speak man you're, you know, like, you're, you know, your dad's age, you know, your, 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 your uncles and shit like that. This newer generation, you know, some of them got somewhat of some manly features, but a lot of them have been raised by single mothers, and they're real effeminate, man. And they don't have that real grimy grit, you know, of, of real men, you know, from back in the days, man, you know what I'm saying? 
So, and coming into this truth as well, you know what I'm saying? This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he's, he's restoring us, so to speak. We're coming back to knowing what, what, it, what, it, what it is to be a real man through the scriptures. The Lord just said to be strong and courageous, man. To fear not. To trust in him. Those are manly traits, man. Now, you know, people, they'll look at us like, oh, look at them niggas, they out there, man. Them niggas, that, what y'all doing? Y'all bums. You don't have jobs. You're sleeping on your mama's couch. And they say all these different things. Them soft, look at them niggas. But they don't know that we are the men. We are the real men. That's why when you go up into that Isaiah 4 and 1, what do you think these women are going to be doing? Hey, look, let me get that real quick. That Isaiah 4, and people don't think that this is, this is going to be, a lot of um, people don't think that this is coming to pass, man, but this is coming to pass. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold on one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So what do you think is going to be happening that seven women help... A woman right now, it was a lady here just the other day, like two or three days ago. This bitch firebombed, <laughs> firebombed her ex-boyfriend on um, mom's house and killed his mama. And you know, his mama was in there in the wheelchair. She couldn't get out the house. He jumped out of the window with his with another woman. So she was, you know, she she said that she she texted him. I wanted you to feel the pain that I feel, but she killed this man's mama. And it was all over jealousy for one woman. So just imagine what's going to be going on that's going to make seven women want to deal with one man and, and basically saying, they said, um, uh, let me read it back. And in that day, seven women shall take hold on one man saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. They gonna be doing their own thing. They like, hey, look, nigga, you ain't even gotta do nothing for us. We'll we'll we'll, we'll have our food and our clothing and shit. We just, hey, just let us be with you. What do you think is gonna be going on? That's gonna be so goddamn bad that seven women with all these all these jealous ass chicks right now don't want your help. They jealous of your mama. They jealous of any female that come around you. But you're gonna have a situation where there's gonna be seven women on one man, man. So that that should let you know. It's going to get real, real fucking bad out here. And a lot of these guys are going to get, get knocked off in, in that World War III. Because they're about to do that draft. That draft is coming. And see, we be praying to the Lord, you know what I'm saying, for the younger brothers, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of the younger brothers, they're military age, that be on the highways and byways teaching the truth. Well, we already know by the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, they're not going to go. They're going to reject it if they got the spirit of the Lord on them. They're not going to go and join this man's military, man. Because if you got the spirit of the Lord on you, you should know that World War III, them niggas going to be fighting against the Lord. <laughs> you know? And even with these militaries, you know what I'm saying? These militaries are ran by the Lord, man, because man's goings of the Lord. The, um, um, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He's in control of the pieces that's being moved. So a lot of two-thirds jakes, they're going to get smoked in, in World War III. And it's going to be it's not going to be as many men. But what? Chicks going to be, man, they're going to be climbing over each other to try and get to a man of the Lord in that day and time, man. See, right now, it's like, don't you know, chicks don't want to deal with you. Them niggas is strange. He's boring. The nigga don't smoke, he don't drink. You know, he don't take drugs. He don't celebrate holidays. I can't deal with no nigga like that. You know? So see, right now we're we're and we're supposed to be looked at like that. We're supposed to be looked at as the weird ones, man, the outcasts. We're not supposed to be uh, uh, looking like um this world, man. You see what I'm saying? We're not supposed to be looking like these people. We're not supposed to be doing the things that these people are doing, man. Let them do them. If you into this truth, man, and you, and you having desires, you like you miss shit from the world. Man, you better fast and recheck yourself, man. You better examine yourself. Fuck this place. We can't wait for this place to fall, man. I be saying, you know, and, and, and you know, 
people, you know, people, they can't believe, you know, like my my pet, my dad, and them, they, they can't believe that I want America to be destroyed. <laughs> That's a totally different mindset from them. Well, why you want the world and why you want America to be destroyed? Ain't that going to mean you going to be destroyed too? All right, well, if that's the case. But this place got to go, man, because it's wicked as hell. We, I can clearly see it. The Lord has clearly shown me that this place is wicked as all hell and that it needs to go, man. Fucking Edomites down cancer to the earth, man. Again, the whole earth is mourning because of this man and his policies. And this man about to get down, man. He about to go straight draconian on y'all asses soon, man. Straight up. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I'm looking at a flag in the backdrop right here on this on this building, this next business over right here. And that shit is all shredded. It's all in shambles. They need a new one. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I see one waving way in the backdrop. You know? But this place is through, man. America's not coming back. Trump not about to make this bitch great again. And Joe Biden is not about to build back better, man. It is what it is. This place is through. It's, it's high time for it to go. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and end out, man. Again, you know, uh, you know that Romans 13 and 11, it's high time to awake out of sleep. And to repent, man, to the Father Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh's side. Hey, because hey, this word is not going to be going out. Much longer, I don't believe. You know, that's me speaking as a man. You know, it's, it's got, you know, um, Amos 8 and 11 got to come to pass. That famine of the word has got to come to pass. The things are speeding up. Things are getting a lot more wickeder. Um, the Lord said the measure of the time diligently in itself. Um, and, and he spoke on those wars, rumors of wars, man. Wars, rumors of wars will be happening before he came. Pestilence, the famines, those things are happening. Earthquakes are happening. Look at all this weather, man. We just had a tornado right here, right up the street from me. <laughs> and it's crazy, bro, because ain't no damn tornadoes coming through Detroit. That's unheard of. Two of them came through, pulled a big ass tree out of the ground by the root, and landed on a damn house while a woman was in bed with her baby, killed the damn two year old, man. And critically injure her ass. And I just was peeping. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, look, this these weather patterns, it's been all kinds of hurricanes. It's been more hur like this 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 year, I don't think it's ever been as many hurricanes and, and you know in, in such a short period of time. And a lot of people been getting deleted, man. So we're at the end of this thing, man. You know? So again, man, you know what I'm saying? It's our time to awake out of sleep. And to repent, man. Come out of Esau's way of thinking, too. As a matter of fact, let me get one more. Let's get that Micah 2 and 10. We end out with that. Yeah, how are I know we be saying, Lord willing, man. Never know. Another scripture might pop up. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye. And depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sword of destruction. So we're to rise up and come out of the mindset of America. And the only way that you can do that, you need to re you need to be reprogrammed with these scriptures, man. First off, you gotta call on the name Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh Shai. And then from there, you go off into the videos, start watching the videos of GMS, man, the brothers of GMS. You, and get edified, learn to milk. You know, and, I, and, and you know, I know the um, one of the elders said all the time, "You newer comers, you're basically gonna have to learn faster than what we did, so to speak, because the time is shorter for you. So you know, you got to get on the grind, man. You know, but get into these scriptures. That's how you come out of the works of darkness. You know, let the Lord, uh, the Lord come in and sup with you." Watch the videos. You pray. You gotta, you gotta continually pray. In the name, you know, to Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Pray for more wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding of the scriptures. Pray for more oil. Pray to have a contrite spirit. Pray to um, pray to have, have a humble and meek spirit. That could, that's very important. Because the Lord, he, he deals with the contrite in, in heart, man. Right? 
So get that down. You know what I'm saying? And just get into those scriptures, man. Take notes of, uh, of what the brothers be saying in the videos. You know? So I'm going to end out there, man. And I pray that the lesson was edifying. So with that, Kwam Yashallah. Kohalo Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rukahakotash. And double honors again to our apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And in Thawada again to all you Akim and Akwa. That's, you know, you know, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of your ability. With that, Shalom.